welcome to the stream. Yes. Yes. We can see there's already uh, quite a few of you watching. It's awesome. And here today we will uh, stream all day from this uh, lovely decorated, used to be a meeting room uh, in the middle of our uh, office. Just improvised it and uh, yes. now it's ready for party. Uh, we did some testing as some of you saw. Uh, uh, as you might know, we have not done many streams. This is like our first almost. It's the so first in our new office. Yes, at least. Uh, so there will be um, probably some hiccups, but uh, hopefully everything uh, will work out fine. Uh, we have a schedule that we uh, put out uh, that you saw on the on the screen, and we'll start with uh, me and Mikkel. Yeah. So maybe we should, for the few of you that don't know anything about us, uh, uh, we are celebrating our one year yes anniversary here. Yes, we brought uh, us some pain. Uh, we brought some pain, yes. Um, but I think Sean wanted to introduce us. Yes. And uh, yes. Um, this is uh, Sean Lundgaard. And uh, Søren Lundgaard is the uh, CEO in uh, Ghost Ship Games. Yes, and this is uh, Mikkel Martin Pedersen, game director and uh, also one of the founders, yeah, as well as me. Yeah, is also a founder. Yes. Uh, and here today we will do our best to uh, celebrate this uh, one-year birthday of Deep Rock Galactic. One year ago we launched into the wilds, into onto Steam, onto Xbox, and it's been pretty damn amazing. It has been, yeah, it has been still a like quite a journey for us, and it's so uh, so difficult to fathom all the things that are happening. More than half a million of you have bought the game and enjoyed it, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not alcoholic, we promise. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Wait. if they Okay, are ready? Yes. <laughs> 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 Thank you. So the water. Yes. All right. So, so uh, we yep. have a plan for today. Yeah, we have a plan for today. Uh, start with this uh, small intro here, and then um, then we, we you and I will will talk about the how this came to be. How did we start? Show you some really old stuff, and that's yeah, uh, gonna be interesting. Yes. Go back down memory lane. Yeah. And see how it all started, and and how we ended up here. Uh, then during the day we will uh, stream. We're already now uh, joining into uh, to games. Uh, the dev team out there is uh, joining into random games. So if you're not watching this, or if you're watching this while playing, you might be randomly mm. playing with a with developer. A yeah. yeah. Uh, we're also going to uh, tweet out uh, things from the office, what's what, what happens, and, uh, and and some sneak peeks of uh, stuff that we are working on. And then uh, later in the afternoon. Uh, Approximately uh, half past three in our time. We have a schedule over here we are looking at. Yes. Oh, the dwarf is falling apart. <laughs> uh, we will uh, hopefully do a uh, designer place where we'll stream us uh, some of the designers uh, playing the game and uh, commenting on, on design and, and taking in questions. Uh, and then uh, after that, we'll have the uh, shout competition announcement like yes. of who won. We'll go through show some of show the some of the good yes, the candidates, the run -ups. awesome, awesome stuff that you yeah. uh, sent in to us, and we've been laughing uh, a lot uh, from uh, from hearing and watching good you. Good stuff. Yes. Uh, so we'll, and we'll find the winners and announce them. Uh, and then lastly, we'll uh, take a round of uh, of twenty questions. Some of them picked from uh, from you guys. Some from uh, well, some of the evergreen questions that we always get get asked. That yeah. we'll try to provide some wake answers from <laughs> <laughs> probably yes and then uh, then the rest of the evening or our evening at least will just be us playing uh, with you on yeah. um, on steam and, uh, and a bit of X xbox if we can mix that in yeah yeah so that's the that's the short of it that yes. it is so uh, but let's get started on the oh, let's, let's start by uh, saying on uh, the cheers, cheers. Should we say rock and stone rock and stone of course <laughs> yes buy the beer For Carl as well. Yeah, and we of course we can see you are writing and chatting in, in here. We will take in some uh, some questions later on, but to begin with, we'll start by telling a bit of um, what had ha what happened. Yeah, uh, and how we how we started and yes. got into business. Um, yeah, so Miguel, you, you the, the thing is actually I was not part of it from the very beginning. There no was like a month or so where I was not there. Yeah. So so you should actually start the, the, start the, the story. story. Yeah. yeah, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Yes. Oh. Uh, three, three, three years ago three almost. Three years ago almost, yeah. yes. Uh, no, the, the our Go Ship Games began as another company was closed down. 
Yeah. And uh, we were, most of uh, the founders of uh, Ghost Ship Games were working in a company called Press Play. Uh, that was a uh, Microsoft uh, studio, first party studio. And uh, Microsoft decided to close that studio down. Oh. And oh, we, have we, we lost the picture, I think, well but maybe we still have sound. But uh, oh, all right. All right, we're back. Technical, yeah. <laughs> technical hiccups. Yes. Small, small uh, black screen. But yeah, uh, we're, we're back. back. Yes. Um, no, so um, we were working at Press Play, and Press Play was closed down by Microsoft. Uh, from by Microsoft, and uh, a group of us got together and said, "Hey, this is actually uh, really sad, but it's also a great opportunity for us to start our own game company." And uh, we had this uh, idea for a game. Yeah which uh, we then said, like, let's start doing this. And I was uh, uh, randomly working in a company uh, like on the floor above where you Yeah, where well we got, got our your first, first office. office yeah. Yeah. And I walked by uh, the office. I know Mikkel from 10 years ago. We yeah. worked together on, yeah, we worked 10 years together on a company called Deadline Games. And I walked into the office and I was like, I could just could feel that startup energy and I looked around and I saw the prototype for what became Deep Rock Galactic and I heard about the ideas and I was like really envious. <laughs> yeah, and the, <laughs> thing, the thing was that when we started out, we were five people starting uh, out uh, and uh, we were three programmers, uh, our art director, uh, Robert, and uh, then uh, me as game director, level designer, everything else and uh, we quickly saw that we needed someone to take the role of being a CEO uh, who could uh, take responsibility for all the serious business things and so on so yeah uh, so we wanted to look out for that and then uh, yeah I know new son from uh, back at deadline games and uh, we uh, we gave him an offer to come and join us um, and I said yes Ver very quickly I kind of decided that that was a once in a lifetime opportunity for me uh, maybe my last time to be part of a startup like this and then uh, a new Megal uh, quickly got to know the other guys and I could see the, the talent and, uh, and the concept was just uh, so good and then uh, the situation was of course we needed some money yes. uh, that's what you really need when you start a company especially because we are so old <laughs> all yeah. of us so we have kids and houses and lots of uh, money that needs to be paid yeah uh, so, uh, and I was, I was, uh, I just quit my job from where I worked and I was very motivated to go out and get some funding. And to do that, we needed uh, some kind of proof that what we worked on was not just kind of something we made yeah, up. Yeah, you can say we, we needed... Of course we, we made it up, but like, that was actually real, right? That was yeah, something. but we also needed to prove that we were professional game developers and that yeah. we could actually execute a game. Um, so we immediately started working on uh, a prototype of the game. Uh, yeah, and yeah, shouldn't we show that? Yeah, and we have we have a video of the very first prototype we made, and uh, yeah, just run it, mess. Yes. And uh, we this video we uh, cut that together. We recorded this for uh, when we were applying for some uh, governmental funds. Yeah, uh, so grant. government funds, but also for the uh, investment that we were looking for. Yeah. So we knew we needed some this this proof uh, of the concept. Oh my God, that is. That is old. That is yesterday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's uh, how it looks. Yeah. In um, April, May 2016, yes. I guess. That yeah. was like two months after we started, uh, uh, founded the company. Uh, this is this was what we uh, had uh, running. Uh, and of course, here there are no, like all the dwarves are the same. Uh, they can all do the same thing. Uh, it is a very crude first Prototype yeah. of our actually just terrain. spotted a question about is this available to play and we we, we have saved most of these different uh, prototypes that we have I'm yeah. not sure we have that one but maybe uh, Jonas uh, our, lead our lead uh, 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 programmer he, he has been s very meticulous of saving everything uh, but we've also talked about the problems uh, with just uh, sharing these things but we might do something later on for yeah. fun. So one of the things that, I mean, the core concept for Deep Rock Galactic it, uh, is a fairly simple one. Uh, Jonas, our lead programmer, uh, he came up with this idea that what if you were playing and exploring caves in Minecraft and you had big guns? Yeah, so uh, let's forget, you were playing let with your let friends. 
meets Minecraft yeah. kind of thing, right? So we sort of use that like left yeah. that meets Minecraft. And that's also why you see the, the the terrain here. It's kind of blocky, Minecrafty kind of setup. With it was also the easiest way for yes. us to do procedurally generated yeah. terrain in the beginning. So uh, that th that part was that, and uh, and the animations. Oh, the <laughs> mining an animation, <laughs> duke, duke, duke. Yeah, I think that was Jonas who did that. That, that slightly <laughs> improved later. Not an animator. <laughs> no. But um, yeah, and you can see here. I mean, that the arms of the dwarves are looking pretty pretty bad. Yeah. Did we have the uh, the classes here? I can't remember. No, I think I think right now what you're seeing here, all the dwarves have the same uh, tools available to them. So you will also see the one who is uh, playing, uh, the controlling the camera here, or playing the character. He has access to both the Gatling gun and the flare gun and the drills. Um, and of course, but, but we uh, had a spawner. I can see. We, right. we <laughs> had a spawner there. Yeah, yeah. yeah and actually, uh, it looked pretty close to what we have yeah. now. Maybe we should so update that. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> Um, yeah, some things stayed for a long time. Some for a long time, yeah. 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 Especially yeah. the flare gun. That was the flare gun uh, also stayed there, yeah, yeah. A long time before we updated yeah. that. Oh, those enemies moving around. We didn't have our uh, uh, navigation no. mess no. in place there. But we yeah, learned that from this, that yeah. we, we needed obviously oh. some better tech. Look now, now that is the drill. That is <laughs> the first uh, implementation of the drills in the game. Uh, that's just the Gatling gun spinning slowly. <laughs> um, it works. Yeah. Yeah, so we presented this and, and it, it, it worked. It uh, got the attention of uh, for both uh, where we sort of uh, uh, grant and for the investment. And it proved, uh, as Michael says, that we, we could work really fast. We could really fast get things on screen that was playable and, and it was uh, actually fun, of course, to play around. Uh, and you can, you can see it is kind of like the, the, the core idea of G Deep Rock Galactic. That yeah, we, uh, the, the sort of like the feeling of exploration, we already had that here. It didn't have fall damage though. No. <laughs> 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 and did, did it have damage at all? I'm not sure all health. No, there's maybe no not. No, there's no... Uh, I can't remember. No, I can't remember either. Yeah. It's, uh, there's clearly something wrong with that spawner spawning in the middle yes. of the air. Um, beautiful particles. Yeah. <laughs> No, so after we did this, we r quickly realized that there are two areas where we need to improve our tech. And uh, the first one is, of course, the uh, procedural generated terrain. Yeah. Uh, what you see here, we were pretty quickly aware that we wanted to go beyond the very Minecraft blocky look yes. and wanted to expand on that. And the other thing, which you can also see here, is the... Um, the AI has a, a lot of uh, problems uh, navigating in this space. Um, so those two areas were areas where we wanted to improve our tech. Yes. And uh, yeah, and we, we uh, had uh, our tech team, which consisted of one person, uh, Henrik. Uh, Henrik. <laughs> yeah, he was working uh, hard on uh, setting up uh, some uh, new tech for the terrain. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then we were also designing and talking about uh, how should we do the procedural generation. Yeah. How, how what what would be the goal for how it was looking? How ambitious should we be? We yeah. Were, we were talking a lot about how modding should work because we actually had an ambition of being mod a moddable game for a long time, like really early on. But we quickly realized that doing too many things things at once was would maybe kill yeah. uh, kill it. So we decided to say, okay, let's put modding uh, ambitions uh, a little low and then and just get some really like more pragmatic, more straightforward, more direct uh, things going so we could uh, control the procedural generation specifically. Yeah. So it didn't become some too magical for no. us. Yeah. No. But I think we have another video now to show you, which is uh, Robert, our art uh, director. He made, the, he put this uh, uh, scene together uh, where we have a cave that he has uh, just modeled in uh, 3D Max. Yeah. Uh, so this has nothing to do with uh, our procedural terrain. You cannot mine here, but it's just sort of like as a, this is the goal, this is the high target for what we would like to achieve with the look of the game. Um, at yeah, when so we did this, yeah, we thought that if we are ever gonna make something that looks like this, it's gonna be amazing. Yeah, so we, we thought this was like beyond yeah. what we could. Yeah, reach. actually we did. And, and we, we were looking at, uh, of course, uh, other games. We were very we were very big fans of uh, Astroneers and and the whole way System Era have, have done with that game, and they have a lot of similarities. And we were thinking, okay, if we can just reach anything like that, we, we, we are in a good state. Yeah. So now looking back at this, uh, I think most of you who, who played the game will say that we, we surpassed, we surpassed this a yeah. little bit. Uh, 
we still, of course, the whole dynamic light thing is just such a powerful thing that we have in, and that's been been that has been of co part of the core uh, yeah. design from the beginning yeah. of uh, yeah. our development that we really wanted you lighting up the caves and not having any, uh, you can say, natural lighting in there. That yeah. it's like you as a player control it with the flares or with the flare gun. But having a cave like this with all these jagged edges and uh, yeah, s very chaotic, uh, it looked like kind of so it was going towards a naturalistic look, you can say, or organic look. Uh, we we were very skeptical if we could uh, do that in the in the tech. Uh, yeah. But then, uh, yeah, then then we started uh, uh, working working on the the tech. Uh, uh, we, we proved that we could. Um yeah, and I think one of the things that we, if we now we talk about the procedural generation as a challenge, but of course the AI was also very challenged by this. And uh, if you imagine that uh, we were doing a first-person shooter, and most first-person shooters are actually taking place on a fairly flat ground. Um, and in our game, we wanted it to be like elevations and ravines and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, oh going up oh and down was all the, the time. The base. Uh, this is actually <laughs> like <laughs> a very first prototype of the uh, drop pod. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the, there's, there's the rig for the... Uh, showing ads? Apps for... for oh, okay, yes. It's the video, yeah, it's true, true. The, the video itself oh yeah. was recorded with that uh, framing yeah. of the desktop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no, no, no worries. Uh, but thanks for. Uh, yeah, thanks for noticing <laughs> yeah. and letting us know. Yes, yes. Someone is saying that uh, the bases would be amazing. Oh, yes. you mean having base? I, yeah, base having like a game? structures like that yeah. in the cave. And yeah. that is something that we could look into later. Uh, so um, yeah, as you can see in the video, it was an ambition at at one point, but uh, it, it it we did a small test at some point. We're doing some procedural yeah. things with that, and it quickly realized that's a huge task. Yeah. So so we have a third video now, and yep. that is another sort of like breakthrough we made in the tech because development. This is the first time we saw the new tech in uh, working order, and we realized we could bring in like 3D models into the te into the yeah. terrain and turn it into destructible terrain. And that is was actually something we, we didn't thought we could do, but no. then Henrik worked his magic and it's suddenly we could do that. It's still a mystery to everybody about Henrik how yeah. this actually works. Uh, so uh, so uh, yeah. uh, please uh, hold down back that one. Yes. Um, yeah, so, so, so maybe just go back to the full screen mess. Uh, yeah, awesome. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so so seeing that uh, tech uh, working and uh, and see what we could the potential that we could do with yeah. that, the terrain tech, uh, we got very confident that this was uh, this was now a realistic project for us to to lift. We had decided to go for early access because we uh, we needed we needed to go to the market pretty fast. Also because uh, even though we got some money, uh, they would run out at some point. So if we could get some traction, it would be is easier for us to uh, attract more uh, uh, attention and, and more money. But there's also, I mean, uh, I actually think from the beginning we also wanted to do this yes. uh, open development, yeah. as we call it, yeah. uh, because we simply think that it was super nice to not hide what we are doing from uh, our audience, our players, yeah. and uh, just be frank about what we're doing and uh, freely talking about uh, Both yeah, you and features. I have been uh, in companies where everything was secret and you can't talk about it and for years you're kind of just, you don't know if this is something people will like or not and you're not getting any, you're getting feedback but it's always like kind of artificial, yeah. there's people you bring in and it's yeah, strange. So I think when we were we had a date, I don't remember the date, where we actually went open development, where we actually started showing yeah. stuff from the game. And I think when we did that the first time, we were very nervous because you always have this feeling that, I mean, is it good enough what you show? Yes. But on the other hand, we had that thing that if we could just start showing what we were working on, then the next thing we showed would be better than the first thing. And then it would constantly be improved. Yeah. So it was, yeah. for us, it was, a you can say it was almost like, just taking our virginity yeah, the and the first getting step was the hardest, right? Yeah, the first step was yeah, the hardest. Yeah. And after we were we were we were live and we were showing how the game looked at whatever state we were in there, yeah. then it just became much easier to just be open about what we were doing. Yes, I think it was around September, October, two thousand and sixteen, where we started. We opened up our started our first uh, social channels like on Facebook and Twitter, and 
none of us knew how to do use Twitter, so that was completely new territory as well. Uh, Reddit was still far away, and we didn't even know there was something called Discord. So all of these channels were we, we were learning as we moved along, but we were also accepting that by doing it like this, we could take a very uh, like a slow climb, but always see the numbers rising, right? So that was just uh, we we banked on constantly having a win each day to, to see it become better than, than yesterday. And that has worked tremendously for us. Yeah, it has. And then, uh, then, then we needed to create some more specific like marketing material, you yeah. can say. And based on what you just saw, the three videos you just saw, we actually made a trailer for that. Um, and we didn't really have made our uh, breakthrough yet in the tech side and the look of the game. Um, but uh, So we made a trailer. We're not going to show you that trailer now, but it looks very similar to what you just saw before. The trailer will show you now. <laughs> and just, <laughs> uh, just, yeah, but just, no, no, just, just hang on. <laughs> a month, a month after we finished oh yeah. that trailer, yeah. Yeah. we had a break, very big breakthrough in our tech and how uh, the look of the game was. So we, and then we quickly yeah. decided that, hey, now the game looks so much better than before we made the first trailer. So let's redo the tra trailer. Yes, yes. And we made an exact copy of that trailer where we re-recorded almost one to one all the shots in it. Um, and that trailer, uh, we're going to show you that. Um, and uh, that, that, that trailer was a very important tool for us. It's coming out, I guess. In, uh, yeah, in getting, getting attention, attention and uh, uh, awareness. Yes. yes. Okay, so the one thing that comes to mind when I'm rewatching uh, this trailer was that the drop part is uh, fairly much the same as <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it was many years, or many years, but uh, uh, at least a year ago, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's something we want to uh, update or give an overall. There's a lot of things in this trailer that it's, it's very much what the game is today. Yeah. Just, of course, today still improved uh, look, but the this, this trailer really was true to uh, what we wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, and we, uh, yeah, we, we, we showed this everywhere uh, we could. Uh, we got it out on, on our social channels and we took it with us to, uh, uh, where we showed it to, to publishers and to investors and to, uh, we went to, uh, to Steam developer days in, uh, in Seattle to, uh, to talk to Valve and, and, and get how to get on to, to Steam. And that was before Steam Direct and so on. So, uh, so it, it was an incredibly important piece of uh, uh, trailer and asset, uh, marketing asset for us. Yeah. And, and creating this trailer not only learned us that, th that the game would, would be fun, but also that we, uh, when we started showing, showcasing it, that there were a lot more interest in this project than we had ever. And it actually before. worked so well for us that uh, publishers or people in the business were paying notice to it. Yeah, and discovered it by themselves without us uh, reaching out, and uh, that's actually how we got in contact with Coffee Stain, who is our publisher now yeah, and so investor in the company. They 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 they, they noticed us on uh, on Facebook, and uh, and we uh, yeah got in contact with them. That was a pretty random thing where we uh, uh, they're from they're Sweden, uh, and we were going to Sweden actually for an event called DreamHack in uh, Jönköping. And it's in the middle of Sweden, and uh, by random chance they were going there as well, uh, because they are uh, also kind of local to that area. Uh, so we had the chance to in uh, I think it was November. I, I didn't go there. You I didn't go I there. No, I think I was on vacation yeah, with the family or something like that, but I missed out on you that. Skipped that part. Yeah. Yeah, but we uh, we got into a, a, a car and drove up to uh, to DreamHack, and uh, and there we uh, w uh, the. the Gig there was actually for the first time to showcase the the game to uh, uh, random people at a at a gaming event. Uh, Dreamhack, most of you probably heard about it, but it is this really really big LAN party. Uh, the one in, in in Sweden, the original one is I think the biggest one in the world actually. 
So there were a lot of people just playing games 24 hours uh, a day uh, for, for four days or something. And we got a chance to showcase the game up there. Uh, we had some fun events where actually the, the, the some people from the Swedish military came by yeah. and, and got really hooked on the game because it was like this team co-op game where they have to <laughs> kind of like work together and, and not die. Right up there. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, so that was fun. Um, but then also Coffee Stain uh, were there and, uh, and we met with them and I instantly we could feel that they were, uh, we were just in, in, in sync with them. We were just uh, talking very easily together and we had uh, the same goals. We also had uh, some uh, some uh, history that was the same. They were also using uh, Unreal. They had done a their first game where Sanctum was a, a, a co-op uh, first-person tower defense shooter. So with their uh, fame from uh, from uh, Goat Simulator, uh, we thought that they could help us uh, for sure uh, bring this uh, game to market and at least be a uh, for us a very very good um, uh, partner to yeah. collaborate with. And that has been proven right. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Um, I can just see on the on the chat that uh, people are say co talking about the the box we ha or the I I enemies we had in the game yeah. in the trailer. Oh, yeah. And uh, those uh, spider-like uh, creatures, people are com referring to them, looking more like what they saw in Starship Troopers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and if you look carefully through that trailer, you can also see that they're partly broken and the animations are very strange and. The story of it is that in the beginning we just cut all the corners we could, and uh, those creatures are actually from uh, Infinity Blade uh, asset pack yeah. that was uh, free on Unreal, and we just took them and did a very quick reskin of them. So we don't really feel that much ownership on those creatures, no. and they're not really our own like true design. Um, so uh, so that's why they are gone. Uh, that doesn't mean that we wouldn't want to do more, uh, let's say, spider-like or starship trooper-like uh, creatures in the future. That is uh, definitely uh, something we would look into. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. So the the trailer uh, also uh, helped us uh, build up our closed alpha uh, sign-up list, which was our most important kind of uh, metric, like where could we see the attention for the game was growing among you, among the community. Uh, and uh, and uh, as we could see that grow, we got more and more like um, we yeah we, we wanted to do this uh, this closed alpha on uh, on Steam, and we wanted to do it as fast as possible to uh, to further uh, prove that the game would be fun and to start the whole open development uh, for real. Of course, we also hoped it would spread even more by going out on uh, on Steam. So uh, on uh, December uh, 2016, we uh, launched the very first version of the uh, of Deep Rock Galactic on uh, on Steam. We uh, have a video to show to you. It was hun hun <laughs> we sent <laughs> out, me. I think, hundred keys for that first day. Yeah, and then, something and then like three that. days later, we sent out three hundred more yeah. keys when we could see it wasn't. That was the. That's the office. office. Second yeah, office. Yeah, it's exactly really the second one. one. That's we, the are second one. Are we are eight one. people at this point. We are six founders, and then we have an animator <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, Ronnie, and designer, game designer. Uh, Ronnie and Frank. Ronnie and Frank. And uh, yeah, here we are <laughs> trying to time it so it. It clearly. Uh, <laughs> it didn't work <laughs> <It> didn't <laughs> the first work. time. But anyways, we managed to get on Steam. And it looked like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, small glimpse for uh, what's next. <laughs> yeah, so, but that's just uh, iterating on the, the Steam uh, launch there. What what happened was that, uh, first of all, of course, we could see people were playing the game, and we played with them, and, 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 and it was fun. But then also some... <coughs> got a lot of love. I mean, yes. I think I was uh, very motivating there in the beginning. Uh then, then we saw people streaming it. Uh, that was mostly the on, on, on YouTube. Uh, and uh, the most important one uh, initially was uh, was Blitz uh, yeah. and his friends who streamed it across uh, Christmas. And I think it got 150,000 views in pretty short time. And we were like... What? That was that was amazing. That was just going from like something where we were counting numbers in in the, the hundreds to counting numbers in the hundred thousands. That's a, That's a, a huge step in yeah. uh, awareness for us, and and we could see that of course on the closed alpha uh, signups, and 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 again further uh, proof that uh, that we were doing the right thing. Uh, actually, parallel to this, the the negotiations with Coffee Stain were happening, and. And part of that outcome was that they uh, they wanted us to uh, to go to PAX. Uh, they had an opportunity to go there, and uh, and and we grabbed that. 
So PAX was uh, in the, the spring uh, 2017. It was like our first big show of yes. the game, yes. like the public. And, and they, Coffee Stain, helped us build that fantastic setup yeah. for a four player. I, I, I'm still. That's Jonas. Yes. He's the four. That's our lead the programmer. Be best four, co -op, uh, four player co op setup at a convention yeah. that I've seen. And we had a, a lot of players coming by. Uh, a lot of w Here we discovered a very important thing was that the fact that we are a game about dwarfs was re really resonating with a certain type of player. People were coming by, looking up at the, 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 the big uh, dwarfs up there, yeah, the cardboard dwarfs, and they say, are they all dwarfs? I love this. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but I love this. <laughs> yeah. And then when they found out how much we, we dug into the whole dwarf thing, uh, they, they just loved it even more and, of course, signed up for Closed Alpha and we sent out keys and, and uh, gave out some T-shirts and so on. Uh, that was so pretty amazing. So it was another proof on the whole, uh, this, this works, this concept is, uh, is solid. Uh, at least there is a... Oh, there we have uh, Anton from, uh, from Coffee Stain. Uh, this uh, concept is something we can move on with. But we also did something else. That was that it was really hard to get attention from outside the fans, like the press. Yeah. On this, we were standing next to uh, a lot of other uh, big things, and yeah, there was some but realization. But I think, I think we had we had this uh, we had this feeling that because we were just a just a PC game and an early access game on top of that, the more yeah. conventional uh, news outlets were not taking us that serious. So we were thinking that if we could get the the console brands, get for example mic uh, Microsoft or Xbox on board, uh, it would sort of lift the attention we would be getting. And uh, that actually turned out to be right. So uh, we started some uh, negotiations with Microsoft, yeah. and uh, they would like to have us as a uh, as a uh, what's called like game for preview, a uh, game preview title. Yeah, same as. Um, you know. And um, I think we we finished, we got the contract with them, and then 14 days later, E3 was happening. Yeah. And uh, Microsoft, after we signed the contract, Microsoft returned to us and said, "Hey." Guys, uh, we could maybe put you into the E3 uh, show, show yeah. uh, that we're doing if uh, you could have a trailer ready for us. In 4K. In 4K. And not enough of the material <laughs> we had done so far had been in 4K because it's just more demanding on hardware and yeah. so on. So, so we hadn't really done that. And we were in the middle of a big update where we were pulling apart everything in the game and we're reconstructing stuff. Yeah. And we were like, okay. <laughs> so, but this opportunity, we couldn't let it no. go by. So we quickly decided that, hey, let's stop everything, just go 100% in on this, focus on making uh, a cool trailer, and uh, then hopefully Microsoft will show it, because that's one of the things is that they will not guarantee that they show the trailer for you, uh, that they show your trailer at the show, no. because they are planning it up until last minute. <laughs> um, but anyways, we started recording and editing, and, uh, and we managed to make a trailer, and luckily, yeah. That trailer actually made it into uh, the show, and I think we had a very prominent uh, position in the trailer show just next to but PUBG. PUBG, yeah. Yeah, but, but, but yeah um, me and Megal traveled to Los Angeles not knowing whether we would be in the, the show, show or not. No. So, so that was an, uh, pretty much a roller coaster ride yeah. <laughs> emotionally. It was fun. <laughs> it was very fun. And, and after that, when, when it was shown, it, it we got an enormous peak in yeah. our attention. And we know that, that many, yeah, here's the, the, the trailer that we showed yeah. at, uh, uh, at E3. And we know that a lot of our our fans that thi this is the trailer, this is the moment in time where a lot of people uh, saw the game for the first the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it, it, it meant a lot. O also, because then we started to get attention from some really big uh, streamers, and uh, and that uh, that of course helped uh, uh, move the attention even more. I think two weeks after this one was when we had Lyric on Twitter uh, yeah. stream the game, which gave us as much attention <laughs> almost as this which <laughs> shows <laughs> the, the, the power of twitch when it goes right yeah it's, uh, it's pretty pretty incredible but look at those creatures how yeah. silly they look when <laughs> they move <laughs> still the old creatures uh, yeah yeah so that was a, a, a really important moment for uh, for deep rock galactic yeah. and, and still and have a good sense games. of all the chaos yes. we have in the game there yes. right in that show yeah. yeah it worked uh, yeah and and we we returned home uh, and they were was exhausted after uh, this yeah, frantic getting this trailer done and, and so many last minute uh, fixes before it was sent to uh, Los Angeles and yeah, yeah. But, uh, but we uh, relaxed a bit and then it was like okay now we now we need to push to watch when to launch into early access yeah. which was the next uh, longer uh, journey 
<laughs> and one funny thing is again, now this was the third trailer we did yeah. for the game. And right after this one, we actually improved all the yeah, uh, yeah. enemies <laughs> and made them our own models with much better animations and stuff like that. Yeah. And it was like, oh, now <laughs> we can't, <laughs> can't look at that uh, no, trailer no, anymore. We, we have to do a new one. Do it again, do it again. So, uh, oh, but we, we waited until we actually launched for Alexis yeah. to do a new trailer. So this E3 was in uh, June, uh, July, th th about there, uh, 2017. Uh, after summer vacation, we had uh, Yox Cars show the game, which yeah. uh, gave us another. They did uh, a great playthrough of the uh, game. Yeah. And that was on a collaboration with uh, with uh, Coffee Stain, uh, and of course, we always hope Yox Cars would show the game because of Diggy Diggy Hole. Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> We've heard that a lot at the <laughs> office. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that was a, a one checked off, like, yeah. yes, Oxcast shows our game. Um, and then we had the Open Alpha uh, weekend uh, on an on a initiative by, uh, by Coffee Stain. We talked with, uh, with Valve and we got an, an, a way to do an Open Alpha where we could get a lot of players in without uh, yeah, getting into problems with giving out too many keys and yeah. all things like that. So, so we had like four days where we got like it felt like testing the launch, and I think we had like ten thousand players Staying at that point weekend, going uh, across those uh, four days. That was amazing, and and we were like, okay, if that's that's a, that's a good number, uh, we could see our wishlist numbers were, were were rising for each of these uh, things we were doing where we were telling about the game, and then we went into the final stretch of. Uh, okay, we need to to launch on, uh, on on Steam and Xbox and Windows 10 Store, and we need to do a new trailer, and we need to have some new stuff that we do not tell about. And then we kind of went in a kind of a black, yeah, uh, silent uh, mode for for some months, three months, I think. Yeah, almost something up like up that. To launch. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of also like preparing the the launch for Xbox and so on and we also yeah. wanted the game to be s as good as it could be when we launched on Steam and, and on Xbox yeah uh, so of course a lot of uh, stabilization of the game you can say and polish yeah so so the initial idea or the, co uh, the, the, the strategy was to deliver a uh, quite polished game for early access and instead of uh, like having uh, a lot of things in we would rather have a, a smaller content set but higher polish than you would expect on early access. And then as soon as we launched, we were prepared to, to just add content and add features uh, pretty quickly. And I think that's been, been part of the success yeah. that we took that strategy. Uh, we really made sure that the game felt publish, po polished uh, right from, uh, from the start. From yeah. the start, yeah. yeah. What's and also, it's we just see it I just take a question here. Someone is asking if uh, there will be more gameplay music in the game. And the answer is yes. Yes. We uh, are already working on it, and I can say that we are actually uh, publishing a small uh, teaser of uh, a very f some of the sketches are our composer yeah. has done. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. We'll, cool. we'll uh, push them <laughs> out later today. Awesome. So yes. Um, yes. So uh, I, I can't remember if we have more videos to show. Yeah, we can we can wait with that. Uh, so um, okay. <laughs> So we don't have to push over that now. Um, so we can say some numbers about how many. I mean, because we, oh yeah. we started on zero amount yeah, of so uh, er wishlist clicks or Everything likes. starts on zero when you start a new yeah. company and you start a new game and you need to build up the numbers. And we were unsure on exactly what the target would need to be to get going. So we asked around in the, in the developer communities and we got some numbers uh, specifically some numbers on, on, on wish list so we could kind of see where we were going there. We uh, we were then tracking our own wish list counts and we could see that before, I think before the open alpha weekend, we had 30,000. Yeah. And that was actually our, our first goal. Like we, we when we when we start first started uh, counting wish list, we wanted to reach 30,000 before we launched. But then we had 30,000, like I think that was after the Yoxcast thing. And then we said, okay, let's try to do this open alpha and see if we can reach 50,000 before we uh, we launched. And the open alpha weekend, it w it, it really worked. Uh, uh, we got a lot we of got a lot of wish list clicks, got a lot of attention, got a lot of signups. Uh, and then uh, when we uh, finally got to uh, to launch in uh, in February 2018, we had 60,000 people that had, that had signed up on wish list, uh, and that turned out to be a a magic number. Uh, 
later I learned that uh, the, the I think the new number right now is uh, about 50,000. You need to be above that to uh, have a successful to launch yeah, on, on yeah. Steam. Yeah. And that means a lot. Then you get into the, 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 al the, the positive part of uh, Steam's algorithm and, and you ca kind of get, get treated good and you get promoted uh, and, uh, and you follow the flow on, uh, on Steam. And we've been riding on that uh, ever since. Yeah. So, so it's all because we spent, as we see it, a lot of time building it up, being open about it, but also making sure that we had the time to do it and, and, and that we spent the energy to, uh, to, to, to build up so the, actually the attention. I actually think that there's another thing that I have seen people writing in comments and so on, which is that I think people have, or our players, our fans have been really good at spreading the word oh and yeah. helping us yes. that way around. Uh, I think it's very often that I see that people wrote, ah, I'm trying to get my friends to uh, buy the game and uh, play it together with me. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, that has, uh, has meant a lot, I think. It has. Yeah. 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 So, so, and some, some of you are still here uh, with us yeah. today. That to see someone was with us from the beginning. Yeah. The and that, 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 that's, of course, uh, fantastic yeah. to, uh, to see that you uh, keep, keep holding out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's been a long time and it will continue. Uh, we will continue at least yes. for a for a long and time with this uh, since the success. I think, I think actually this is also, I mean, one of the, I it goes actually back to some of the core, uh, core design decisions we made for the game, which was that we wanted to do a co-op game, but it was very important that co-op was something we meant and was something that was important to the game. And I, um, I, I remember playing uh, Left 4 Dead. Yeah where I was playing with someone who was already extremely good at playing Left 4 Dead. And I had that feeling that I was more like a dead weight yeah. than actually... You didn't bring anything to the No, team. I didn't actually bring anything oh. than besides dying and uh, needing, uh, needing to be revived. <laughs> 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 um, and I really wanted to make a game where people, even though they are level one, uh, uh, come in and can actually contribute to the whole game. Yeah. Um, and that's why we made the decision of having the four different uh, classes yeah. that were uh, together. If, if you are playing with four different, they are really strong and they sort of uh, can do a lot of things together. Um, and that ties back into, I think, that it's just been amazing to have a, a community where, w w when we have been uh, playing the game or hearing people talking about the game, they say that we have uh, one of the most friendly uh, communities, and uh, I, that just makes us. Yeah, I that's mean, maybe the so most so important happy. thing of everything. Yeah, so yeah I mean, it's just instigated that. Yeah, that's, uh, that feels really, and, and really good. And that we have been able to generate a game that <laughs> where people can be so happy about playing the game. Yeah. Just I remember uh, when we saw the first uh, kind of set of Steam reviews, and we realized that we were hitting something above ninety percent. That was we, we had yeah. not expected that. We no. had expected eighty percent because we're a multiplayer game, and it seems really difficult to get any higher of that. Like that, especially with a game like with Friendly Fire and yeah. lots, lots of ways to troll if you if you want to do that. So the ninety percent plus and 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 it's yeah it's stabilized on. On 92 now, uh, overall, it's, uh, it's just incredible. Yeah. yeah. So and thank you. Yeah, thank you very <laughs> much. Yeah. Um, I also think we have added, we have added, uh, we tried to add a lot of uh, social features to the game. Yeah. Where, and about for that. example, I mean, we have like uh, the bar where you can, after playing a successful mission or a failed mission, you can go yes. and uh, drink a beer with your, uh, with your teammates and uh, sort of uh, talk about <laughs> what went right and what went wrong in, in the last mission. Yeah, that, that also uh, worked a lot better than expected. Yeah. Of course we had ho hopes, but uh, yeah, when you see it and you see how, how much it means now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And also like the just uh, our salute, like Rock and Stone. I mean, that's just a way for you to show your gratitude to your friends and like say it went well when you are on the drop pod on the way out of a mission. So before we move on to the uh, show, the early access launch yeah. trailer because I think that's maybe the last thing yes. to just show and yeah. leave it at that. It's like looking a little bit into the, the future. Uh, the mo more stuff will happen today and of course we'll have the 20 question uh, at the end and there will be a bit more looking into the, yes. the future there. But the future for Goshi Games and the future for, for Deep Rock Galactic, well, uh, the, the absolute near future is definitely just more Deep Rock Galactic. We're investing everything we can into the to the game. We are, we're 20 people at the company right now and, and we, we're not 
uh, when we set out, we didn't want to grow a big company. Uh, we wanted actually the size we have now is pretty much perfect. Maybe a few more, but that's that's it because we 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 don't want it to be so big that we have to uh, yeah not have hands on the the game all of us. No. So so that's really important that the experienced people are not just leading other people but are actually uh, making the game. So as long as we can keep this size, we'll do that. But that also means that we can't do a lot of things at the same time. So we'll keep on with kind of the same momentum as we have now. Yeah, and then just prioritizing what yeah. you think is the most important thing for the next yeah. uh, update. And then just and I think the, burn the burning question here is then for many of you is when will we leave uh, early access? And, and we, we don't know yet. But we what we do know is it will not be in the first half of uh, 2019. Uh, on our Steam Store page, we still say 2019, so that means sometime in 2019. I guess that ultimately that's the, the very last day of 2019. <laughs> well as long as we <laughs> can't hold that promise, of course, that can still also change. But so what we know now is uh, it will not be uh, before after summer vacation at the earliest. No. Uh, we really like the situation that we are in now, that we can continue to deliver uh, good updates, and that we that we feel that we still add to the to the core of the game. Uh, and then we want to take our, uh, as we took our time building up to the early access launch, we want to do the same f towards the full launch to make sure we do it properly and, and, and right and, and along with you guys. Yeah, and I think we, I mean, if you have looked at the roadmap, I mean, you can see we have a lot of things that we actually want to do or will try to do because it's not, there's no guarantee yeah. that we will be able to do er everything that is on the roadmap, but there's still just so many things that we want to throw into the game and you should also remember that as the game has uh, grown we also have a lot of maintenance to do on all the stuff that we already did like for example last update where we uh, improved the whole spawning of enemies that system is uh, was, was taking some time but it was also necessary for us to actually be able to build um, yeah. build more uh, get more enemies into the game and have a have a more solid uh, foundation yeah, so we will, uh, in the last session today, also talk more about the roadmap, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure. I, I actually don't know exactly what the 20 questions are, but I would be really surprised no. if, if a, a, a few uh, core questions for the roadmap would not be uh, on the list. So mm, most likely. Yes. All right. So we uh, end the this part here, and then yeah, uh, I think any so. last words <laughs> for... No, I think uh, we, can, we can end with the trailer. We'll say goodbye first, and then yes. we'll show the trailer. So, but uh, let's... Uh, Cheers. Cheers. And rock and stone. Rock and stone. This better gem, by the way. Oh. <laughs> the early access won't fail. I hope. I hope. It is. It is. <laughs> it sure is. Get on board. We're about to leave. <laughs> I know Robert is really gonna uh, pimp, pimp, it, pimp the drop pod, fix it. But what if it breaks? <coughs> no idea, okay. Are there clear? Is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're ruining the audio. Oh, we're just checking some uh, some comments. All dwarves, that's us. Someone is writing that is a very well directed trailer. Good <laughs> good camera shot. Actually, that's actually a little bit interesting because it's one of the very m very challenging things for us when we do trailers is actually recording all those things. And it's just people on the office that are doing the recording. So uh, uh, anyways, oh yeah, we have we got dancing into the game. That was also <laughs> a very important. Uh, <laughs> okay, Master, we should set up the uh, intermission page and then see if we can. Prepare. We will very likely be delayed with the next uh, yeah. part, uh, and we'll inform you how how it goes. We uh, the, the setup for that is partly untested, so uh, already now doing excuses if it doesn't work, yeah, or, or, or if it's cancelled <laughs> altogether. <laughs> All right, see ya.